For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel son of a bitch. Finding a good buddy to hike with is a partnership forged in the challenges faced during a tense outdoor adventure. But if your buddy is incompetent, constantly makes terrible decisions and gives lousy survival tips, your outing can become a nightmare. Please click those two things I always say. This is Outdoor Disasters. The Hollywood Hills is an urban wilderness nestled right in the heart of Los Angeles, California. It's an area where mansions of the stars reside, famous sights, and a view of the surrounding expanse of the Los Angeles area. Home to the iconic Hollywood sign, the Hollywood Hills is also home to a zoo, a golf course, and the famous Griffith Observatory. This is a difficult wilderness to get lost, as many homes and sites are often populated with people. The hills are home to a myriad of Hollywood stars and is one of the, the wealthiest neighborhoods in the world. With easy trails close to civilization, soccer moms feel safe traversing this wilderness. In the land of glitz and glamour, the Hollywood Hills, where the wilderness is not for the faint-hearted. This dazzling frontier where fame and harsh environments coexist, only the lowest of IQs can find themselves lost in this expanse. For Jeremy Rockliffe and Zach Plainview, their Hollywood Hills excursion would be a cautionary tale. Jeremy and Zach, two friends with little in common, decided to take a hike into the wilderness in the Hollywood Hills. Jeremy saw this trip as a trip to forge their friendship even closer. We were best friends as long as I can remember, Jeremy said. Zach, on the other hand, saw their relationship quite differently. We were always acquaintances, not really best friends. He's the one that pursued my friendship, he said. Regardless of the relationship status, the two partners planned to go out into the rough wilderness of the Hollywood Hills to test their courage in hostile terrain. Never having camped before, Jeremy felt prepared for the excursion, as he had seen Yogi the Bear cartoons in the past. While Jeremy was planning for camping, Zach believed this was just a day trip where they would have snacks and return in a few hours. I saw this as a way for us to get closer together and maybe reveal some of the feelings we've been having, some unspoken feelings we never talked about, Jeremy recalled. While Zach was always kind of weirded out by Jeremy, he was excited about the trip since this was something he had never done before. While the Hollywood Hills are more of a neighborhood park nestled in a big city, some treacherous climbs pushed the two to the limit. The plan for the hike was initially simple. Walk for a couple of hours, enjoy a snack, and then head back. However, the hike presented challenges with climbs and slips, especially for Zach, who claims to have an equilibrium problem. Being born with an equilibrium problem, it was hard for him to get a grip on the treacherous cliff. Jeremy, being the so-called experienced outdoorsman, guided Zach down the cliff. The day was progressing smoothly, and Jeremy was very huggy with Zach throughout the day. At first, I was really having a great time. I thought this was going to be a great day, Zach said. As the excursion progressed, the two were getting thirsty and stopped for a water break. Jeremy recalled from a gym teacher that drinking water during a workout can cause cramping. I remember telling Zach to drink it, but don't swallow it, spit it. Uh, I guess I wish I were a little more educated about that. I later found out that definitely didn't help us out in the long run, Jeremy said. As the day went on, the terrain was getting more rough. As they reached a clearing, Zach's equilibrium issues required rest. Jeremy knew this was the perfect time for the planned prank he had in store for Zach. Unbeknownst to Zach, Jeremy, that it would be funny to leave the food back in the car. For some reason I find when people are in misery or when people are just like miserable, for some reason I find that hilarious. So I figured how funny it would be if I left the food in the car and Zach would be like, uh, I'm so hungry. I mean, it's pretty funny if you think about it, Rockliffe said. Zach wasn't finding the joke that funny and understood how stupid a mistake this was. Zach worried if they got lost, they would have no sustenance to survive. Jeremy disregarded Zach's worries and assured him they would not get lost. Zach revealed the map was with the food. To say that I was upset would be an understatement. I was furious at this point because I took a lot of time actually picking out these snacks, and the fact that I wasn't going to be able to enjoy them on this trip really pissed me off, he said. Frustration engulfed Zach as he regretted joining Jeremy on the outing. 
Navigating challenging terrain filled with rocks and boulders, Jeremy continued his water-spitting routine, unintentionally spraying the back of Zack's leg. Zack recalled, he was spitting his water all over the place and he spit his water on me, and at that point it was just like putting gasoline on fire. Reflecting on their childhood, Jeremy recalled that physicality was their method of resolving conflicts. With their limited water supply, the two engaged in a playful water fight. I guess I shouldn't have done that because that was all the water we had, but I would rather me and Zach get along than, you know, worry about how much water I have, Jeremy said. Regretting his reaction, Zach apologized to Jeremy and their relationship was restored. Zach believed they were close to the car and that Jeremy knew the way but in reality, Jeremy had no clue about their location and instructed Zack to take the lead. Recognizing their water supply had depleted, Zack found a silver lining, describing it as an enjoyable experience. However, he would later harbor regrets, acknowledging, after a couple of hours, I started to get really, uh, thirsty. At this point, the friends found themselves lost, wandering in unfamiliar surroundings. I have no idea what to do anymore. You literally need to be the parent in this situation, Jeremy said. I'm mentally and physically prepared to save myself. You're on your own, Zach rebuffs. But Jeremy had a profound realization, believing his roommate be concerned if he was not around to watch their favorite program. My roommate knows I would never miss the finale of American Idol for anything. When he sees I'm not there tonight, he's gonna call the cops, he says. You for the map and the compass. Oh, man, that was your fault. But this I do not forgive. You kidding me, Adam? Chris has more talent in his pinky than Adam does in his whole body. Do you watch the show? I'm curious. Have you ever seen an episode of American Idol? I've been to the first three tapings, man. I knew from day one he was going to make it to Bullshit. the top. Bullshit. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for Adam right now, man. What are you doing? Wait a minute. You brought your cell phone? Jeremy was appalled at the fact Zach brought his phone. The plan was not to bring any technology on the trip and he left his phone in the car. Zack thought this was a stupid idea and felt he needed to stay connected to reality. If I knew he brought his phone, I would have brought my GPS, Jeremy recalls. But Zack could get no bars and dehydration and hunger were setting in for him. After a few hours into the Hollywood Hills, it was getting desperate for the buddies. Zack believed that it was the end and rather than suffer anymore, taking his own life, was his only option. When Jeremy turns his back to take a piss, Zack takes his belt, wraps it around the tree, and attempts to take his own life. Jeremy, seeing this, springs into action and unties the belt from his neck. If you die, I die, Jeremy says. What Jeremy really wanted to say was that he couldn't live without Zack. The shock of the incident made Jeremy urinate on himself. Jeremy reasoned with Zack, who initially believed they were destined to die until a sudden moment caught their attention. Initially dismissing it as a mosquito or insect noise, the humming sound grew louder, revealing itself as a passing plane. The sight of the plane felt like a blessing, breaking through the clouds like an angel flying out. The relief and joy overwhelmed them, transitioning from a state of despair to ecstatic happiness. With the expectation of rescue teams and helicopters, they set up a resting area anticipating a swift and sure rescue. However, as time passed, doubt crept in, wondering if the rescuers were on their way. The duo contemplated potential scenarios, with Zack expressing concern about the delayed rescue. We waited and waited, and it was getting later and later. I thought, okay, Zack and I can huddle together and keep each other warm for the night, and we'll be okay. I was okay with that. I felt like it was a good time for us to bond more, Jeremy proclaimed. As hours went by without any sign of rescue, Doubts increased and Zack suggested they start moving to find food. Despite Jeremy's insistence on waiting, Zack's frustration grew, and he became determined to find sustenance on his own. Harboring resentment towards Jeremy for the situation, felt this was all adding up to be Jeremy's fault. I decided to get my own food and I didn't care that Jeremy wanted me to stay in that spot. I was so angry with him because looking back, I was adding in all the pieces together and this was all adding up to be his fault. The whole reason why we were lost in the first place was his fault, Zack proclaimed. The tension between them escalated as Zack embarked on his quest for sustenance, leaving Jeremy frustrated and contemplating the unfolding circumstances. As Zack was looking, a horrifying moment ensued as a snake struck him, clamping to his eyeball. Jeremy, witnessing this dire situation, prompted immediate concern for his friend's well-being. 
offering him some water that Jeremy had withheld from him and imploring him to spit it out. Zack, bewildered at the fact he had water, stated, He brought over a bottle of water that I didn't know we had, and I was wondering why he didn't bring this bottle out earlier. I think he might have been taking drinks of it while I wasn't looking. Jeremy countered, proclaiming, I was saving it until when things got really bad. And I was also, you know, drinking out of the side because I knew I had to stay strong for him. I knew I had to be the one who might have to carry him out of there. So I did that, especially with the equilibrium issue. There's no way he would be able to carry me out. He's barely able to walk over a rock. Seeing that Zack's eye was plucked from the socket, feeling a mix of horror and determination, Jeremy promised to find and reattach Zack's eye. Though Zack questioned the possibility, Jeremy was hopeful, drawing parallels to other body parts being reattached after injuries. Jeremy eventually located the eye covered in blood and confronted the challenging task of handling the situation. The following day, as their physical and mental states were depleted, Jeremy's primary concern upon waking up was Zack's condition. Attempting to lift Zack's spirits, Jeremy engaged in a somewhat absurd conversation about potentially urinating on the injured eye to alleviate the effects of the snake bite. Their dire situation led Jeremy to consider their options, urging Zack to hold on until they reached higher ground, hoping for better visibility. As they continued through the woods, Zack eventually got a cell phone signal, eventually succeeding and reaching 911. Me and my friend, we got lost out here in the woods and we we're dying, we're dying, I'm hungry, we're dying of thirst. I got bit in the eye by a snake and we're out here. We're about to die, he stated. However, the conversation with the emergency operator took an unexpected turn, with the operator displaying an unhelpful and indifferent attitude. All right, sir, you need to calm down, you need to breathe. There's no need for the attitude, I'm on TMZ right now. So let me go to Google and do you know what color the snake was? It was yellow and brown, the operator asks. Frustrated and desperate, Jeremy struggled to convey the severity of their situation while dealing with the operator's unprofessionalism. Despite the momentary hope of contacting help, the situation remained uncertain, and Zack's frustration grew as he realized that their chance of rescue was still uncertain. In explaining the situation to Jeremy, he states, You just had 911? Yeah, I had a bar and now it's gone, but I'm trying to get it back. My God, you idiot! Do you know that thing's probably interfering with their tracking system? They've been trying to find us all night, probably, but because your cell phone is throwing them off. Are you retarded? That hey. makes no sense whatsoever, man. You're ridiculous. You're Give losing me that your phone. mind. No. Give me the phone. No. This prompts him to snatch the phone from Zach, throwing it away. Zach exhibited a look in his eye that hinted at a new level of frustration and anger, initiating a series of punches, with each connection bringing a sense of satisfaction. Jeremy believed Zack was in a delusional state of mind. Zack believed it was this moment in connecting punches to Jeremy's face that a moment of clarity washed over him, an overwhelming sense of self-awareness. For some reason, I felt a moment of clarity like I had never been more myself at this point. If I had any chance of surviving, I need to get as far away from him as possible, he recalled. Zack jolts away wildly, desperate for distance between Jeremy. It is then that he spots an in-and-out burger wrapper, Sniffing it, he knew he was close to safety. Finally, after two days lost, in the hostile wilderness of the Hollywood Hills, he finally reaches civilization. In a crazed state, Zack snatches a milkshake from a startled woman. It was a strawberry milkshake. If I had my choice, I would have picked chocolate, but it was okay, he recalled. Meanwhile, Zack's phone call triggered a series of events that ultimately led to Jeremy's rescue. Wandering through the woods for approximately an hour, he encountered a helicopter and two rescue crews. What began as a rescue, however, morphed into a two-hour chase. They had chased me around for quite some time. I wouldn't let them near me. I really didn't know what was going on, he recalled. He evaded them, climbing a tree and resisting their attempts to approach until they successfully sedated him and transported him to the hospital. Post-rescue, the relationship between the two fractured. I don't really talk to Jeremy anymore. I haven't seen him since that day, and I don't want to ever see him again, Zach said. With the unanswered letters, phone calls, emails, and telegrams, Jeremy still held hope they could rekindle their friendship. The once close bond was severed, and the desire to reunite seemed one-sided. Despite the fractured connection, he acknowledged that Jeremy might witness this account and extended a message stating, 
I know he's going to watch this, so, you know, Zach, I miss you. I hope you contact me. I think about you all the time. Imagine stumbling upon a friend who's like a mischievous GPS. Instead of guiding you to your destination, they navigate the scenic route of chaos and hilarity. This accomplice isn't just a pal, they're a mischief maestro orchestrating symphonies of bad decisions. They'll convince you that the shortcut to friendship involves detours through the most peculiar places, where laughter echoes louder than common sense. This buddy is a beacon of bad decisions. Beware, as this friend isn't just a companion, they're a soul sucker leading you down the rabbit hole of life-threatening adventures. Differentiating between a good friend and someone who might be a terrible person involves being attentive to certain characteristics and behaviors. Seek friends who are reliable and keep their promises. Trust is a crucial element in any healthy friendship. Be wary of friends who manipulate situations or use guilt to control your actions. Healthy friendships are built on trust, not manipulation. Friends who consistently bring negativity into your life without offering support or solutions can be draining and detrimental to your well-being. Friends who thrive on drama and chaos may not contribute positively to your life. Healthy friendships are built on stability and mutual support. A person who consistently disregards your boundaries or makes you uncomfortable may not have your best interests at heart. Remember to trust your instincts and take your time getting to know people before considering them close friends. It's crucial to prioritize your well-being. Crucial tips so you can navigate an outdoor disaster.